Well, good morning, and God bless you today. Are you trusting God in the hard times? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will set your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord and depart from evil. It's hard to trust in the Lord when it matters most. It seems like the first thing to get attacked is our daily devotion to prayer and God's word. The first thing to get attacked is going to church and honoring God and devoting our lives to him. It's so easy to get off track. It seems like it can happen just in a day. We can find ourselves in a rut, straying away, going back to the things of the world. But we are called to remain faithful and obedient, even when it's hard and even when our situation is bad. We mustn't lose heart because we know that our brothers and sisters throughout the world are going through the same problems that we are, that we are a family, that we are in this world but not of this world, and yet we go through things together as a as the body of Christ, to be there for one another, to encourage each other. And so we've been going through James and so many deep practical truths to apply to our life just here in this first chapter. The chapter starts that we consider our hardships and trials joy, for they are evident that God is working within our hearts, that he is active within our lives. As hard as that is, sometimes we go through things that we just simply don't understand. As in for, as Peter says that it's though something strange were happening to you. I know you can relate to that. Trials are how God strengthens our faith. We must have strong faith because this world is getting darker and darker. We have seen a progress just in my short little lifetime. The world has changed dramatically. We are on a crash course towards something, and I think we know what that is. Philippians 4.4, 4, Rejoice in the Lord, I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all, for the Lord is near. Do not forget the Lord is near this day. Rejoice. Consider your trial a joy. The Lord is near. He will not leave you nor forsake you. He's not going to leave you where he found you. He's not going to give up on you. And that can be hard to remember when you're in the storm. So today I wanted to go through James chapter 1 verses 19 through 21. So I'm going to continue on in our little study we've been doing in James. So let's read uh, chapter 1, verse 19 through 21 together real quick. It says, My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent. And humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. So it starts off in verse 19. My dear brothers, take note of this. Pay special attention to this right here. Everyone. Young and old. Male and female. You and me. Everyone. Everyone should be quick to listen. Take special note of that. We shouldn't always be voicing our opinions and demanding attention or wanting to be heard. And that can be hard too. It can be hard to control the tongue, huh? It can be hard not to voice our opinions and to listen to others. It can be hard not to argue our point of view. Now there is a place in, for that. And there's some things that we must voice the truth of God's word. But that's not our opinions. Our opinions and the truth of God, God's word are vastly different. 
We all have opinions. We all have preferences. We all have things we like and, and don't like, but it's to to honor others above yourself will help us to be quick to listen and slow to speak. We need to be attentive to others' needs and listening to them. It's hard to listen to others, to seek out what they need so that we can be that that friend, that we can be the, the love of Christ to them if we're always talking. So everyone should be quick to listen. We should listen more than we speak. And when we do that, this will help us to become slow to anger. And we should also be listening to the Lord, obeying, giving thanks, and trusting in Him through whatever life brings. Let me read Ecclesiastes verse, uh, or chapter 5. Guard your steps when you go to the house of God. Go near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools who do not know that they do wrong. Do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to, other, to utter anything before God. God is in heaven and you are on earth. So let your words be few. Wow. So to go near to God, to listen rather than to offer a sacrifice of fools. That we should be quick to listen to God, quick to listen to those around us, slow to speak, slow to voice our own opinions, sl slow to speak up when we don't like something. Right? But, but when we do speak, it should be as if we're speaking the very words of God, and that whatever we speak should be for the edification of, of those around us, to build them up in faith, not to tear them down by being critical, by, you know, demanding our preferences and putting our opinions onto others. God's truth is what matters. When it comes to God's truth, we stand, we speak, we proclaim, but that's not our opinion. This is God's truth we're talking about. So slow to become angry. Wow. We see a lot of angry people today. I struggle with anger myself. I always have. But I know I want to be gentleness. I want my gentleness to be evident. For the Lord is near. For the Lord is living within me. For the Lord has saved me. I want it to be evident of what the Lord has done. I don't want to, to repulse people. I don't want to voice my opinion. I want to speak God's word. I want to speak truth into the hearts of those who need it. I want to be the gentleness of Christ for those who need it. I don't need my own way. I want the Lord's will to be done in my life. And, I, and I'm desperate for that. And I know you're desperate for that. And apart from God, we can do nothing. So we cry out to Him in desperation, Lord, take control of my life. Help me to walk in obedience. Help me to proclaim the truth of Your Word. Help me to listen to You, Lord. To be slow to speak, to quit going my own way. Give me self-control. Self-control is a fruit of the Spirit. We have to be filled with the Spirit of God. And we can't be filled with the Spirit of God unless we're denying the flesh. We need to ask God to help us to control our anger. To be humble. To admit uh, where we fall short. And to just ask God for help. It's a common idea in the world today that it's okay to be angry. I've, I've heard so many times in my life, well, well, I was mad. Or I lost my temper. And then, <laughs> well, it's like you found your temper. I find my temper sometimes. Let's not do the easy thing. The easy thing is to be angry. 
The easy thing is to lose control. The easy thing is to justify our sin. The hard thing is to confess and forsake our sin. To deny that sin altogether. To pick up that cross. To deny self and to follow Christ. To walk humbly with our God. So the world likes to use anger to intimidate and to control others. Or even to manipulate others by provoking them to anger. To get them to act out of character and then to flip everything against them. Have you ever had someone do that to you? They're just pushing you to get a reaction. Until eventually you overreact and then they turn the whole situation and make everything your fault. Because they were able to provoke you to anger and that was their whole agenda was to manipulate you in that way. So it's saying that anger cannot produce the righteousness of God. We are to live a righteous life and we can't do that because anger gives a foothold to the devil as it says in Ephesians 4. So anger can be a result of our own selfishness, a lack of self-control, a lack of trust in God, a lack of patience, a lack of, you know, we're not getting our way and we want our own way and we want it now. So anger can come from bitterness and unforgiveness, failing to deal with our own sin while all the while highlighting the sins of others. We get angry at others when they wrong us, and yet we don't even acknowledge our own sin. Anger cannot produce the righteousness of God in our lives. Anger, if we're angry people, it will not be evident. There will be the gentleness of the Lord, the presence of the Lord within our life will not be there. It won't be a reality to others. We want to be seen as people who have been with Jesus, who is filled with the Holy Spirit, who is different than the world. So we ask God to change our hearts, to help us, to help us be gentle, loving people, full of God's truth, standing for what is real, for what is truth, living for God from our heart. Not angry, but rejoicing in the trial. Full of hope, even when, when it's hard. Full of joy and, and love and peace. Even when our situation is calling for us to be angry and to be fearful and doubtful. Because those with Christ are those with hope. No matter how hopeless our situation is here on earth... We are filled with the very presence of God. For he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. Being an angry person will grieve and hinder the Holy Spirit working in and through us. That's why in verse 21 it says to get rid of all moral filth. Let's read verse 21 again. Therefore get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. So Romans 13, 14 says, Do not think about how to gratify the desires of the sinful nature, but rather clothe yourselves in the Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians 3, 12 says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion and kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with one another and forgive whatever grievances you have against one another. Forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. And above all this, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect unity. Get rid of. This is a conscience act, a decision we make to get rid of the sin and to obey God, to trust God, to not get angry at our situation. To be, to be quick to listen to God and saying, God, what are you teaching me through this? And, I, and to be slow to speak, to utter anything before God, for, for he is in heaven and we are on earth. And we don't bring complaints to God, but we bring our situation with thankfulness and we present our request. We're not anxious, but we're thankful. And we bring it before the Lord because we trust him and we know that he 
is in control and we trust in the Lord with all of our heart and we don't lean on our own understanding, as hard as that is, those who trust God will reject sin. When we fall into sin, this is us not trusting God. We have a need and we take it into our own hands to fulfill it. There's a situation we're going through and it's difficult. So we often fall back to, fall back into sin of some sort to try to make ourselves feel better in the situation. Justifying our anger, our bitterness, or, or whatever it is that we fall into. So it says that it's so prevalent. Prevalent. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent. The evil is very prevalent today, isn't it? Isn't it hard to stay clean in such a dirty world? I mean, you can't, you're can't. you getting exposed constantly to things, huh? We all are, and we really need to be our own filter and guard, guarding what our eyes see and what we hear, what we are allowing in. You know, what are we watching on TV? What kind of music are we listening to? These things matter. They really matter. It's not freedom. Christians have no freedom to indulge in questionable, sinful things. So we ask God to convict our hearts of whatever it may be. And, and to lead us away from those things. To change our hearts to where we desire His will. So to humbly accept. To, this is to live by God's word. To trust and obey God. To apply His word to our lives. If we're humbly accepting, we're living by. This is, this is Christ living in us and through us. Not by our own strength, but by God's spirit. Enabling us to live a righteous life. To control our anger, to control our desires and lust, to change our hearts, to produce fruit that we would show ourselves to be the disciples of Christ, that our gentleness would be evident to all, that they would see that the Lord is near, that the Lord lives within us, that we are the people of God, that we are clothed in Christ and we are separated from the world. When we accept Christ in faith, a living faith will produce obedience. It will produce a changed life. We will put off and get rid of the old self. It is God who enables us to do this. We will get rid of the moral filth and separate from the world, surrendering each day that we confess and forsake our sin and that we walk humbly with our God. Trusting in Him, no matter what this day brings. Trusting in Him, even when it's hard. And when we do fall short, we acknowledge that. We confess and forsake our sin, and we ask Him to cleanse us. To cleanse our hearts. To bring us up out of whatever muck we've got ourselves into. Because it happens. We're, we do that kind of thing. All of us do. But more of Christ and less of us. More of the things of God and less of the things of this world. We need God to help us. We ask God. We surrender this day. Lord, I want you to have control. Help me to walk in obedience to you. Help me to trust you when it's hard. Help me to control my anger. Help me to be quick to listen and slow to speak. Help me to listen to those around me, to be attentive, to put others first, to be attentive to their needs. Lord, I don't want to be angry. I have so much to be thankful for. Help me to trust you. Help me to get rid of all moral filth. Lord, whatever's in my heart that I'm not seeing, reveal in me. Show me where I, what I'm not seeing, Lord. Help me to walk humbly, to humbly accept the word planted. To live by your word, Lord. To walk in obedience. To trust you. So that is our study in James 
19 through 21 in chapter 1. So to take special note of this, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Let's make that our prayer today. That if we struggle in that area, that we just ask God to help us to do that. That we would devote this day fully for his will. Surrendering our hearts, surrendering all, trusting completely in him for all that we need. That our gentleness would be evident to all for the Lord is near. That we would be clothed in our Lord Jesus Christ. That we would be separated from the things of this world. That it would be evident that we follow Christ. Slow to voice our opinions. Slow to flaunt our own desires and our our own anything. But quick to listen to God and obey. Quick to listen to the needs and other of others and be there to help. Slow to become angry. We're trusting God with this day. We're not going to go get angry when something doesn't go our way. But we're going to trust God. And we're going to meditate on this verse today that that we need to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God in our lives. We want to live a life pleasing to the Lord. We don't want to be angry and bitter and unforgiving. We don't want to be unthankful and ungrateful. When we complain. But, we're, but we want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Walking in the ways of the Lord. Living by the truth of God's word. So I encourage you to meditate. If you're watching these studies. Meditate on that verse. That's one of my favorite verses. Because I know it applies to me probably more than it does you. But have a blessed day. God bless you.